We are recording. Okay, thanks. So I'll uh, call the meeting to order. This is the November 16, 2021 meeting of the Town Plan and Zoning Commission for the Town of Fairfield. This is a special meeting. Um, we have um, two uh, um, segments. One is the old business of 40 Hillside Road. That's two companion applications. And then the second is a, on the agenda is a closed executive session regarding 131 Beach Road. Uh, unfortunately, um, our town attorneys uh, are not available or had a conflict this evening and couldn't come to um, participate in that. So we will not be having the closed executive session um, this evening. The, um, the only matters uh, on our agenda today are the um, old business and executive session. Um, it's, uh, I'll call them together so we can talk about them uh, and hear about them, but we don't necessarily need to vote on them uh, together. Uh, it's 40 Hillside Road, zone change application of 40 Hillside Road LLC to establish a neighborhood design business district on land presently zoned residence AA. Um, and then 40 Hillside Road, special permit application of 40 Hillside Road LLC pertaining to the construction of a veterinary hospital. Uh, I think that uh, we have all of the regular commissioners um, who attended the hearings, the relevant hearings on this. Is there anybody who we need to confirm um, got up to speed? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Corcoran was not present at the initial hearing, was present at the last hearing. Uh, and I know he was looking at the video today, but he can confirm whether he's ready to go. Yes, I, I am ready. I, I watched everything. Okay, terrific. So that uh, that rounds that out. So with that, um, Mr. Went. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Jim Went for the record. Um, the subject property is 1.005 acres in size and is located on the easterly side of Hillside Road. The site since 1972 has been occupied by a church, which was approximately 2,200 square feet in size together with a 24 car parking lot. The church use was established by a special exception that was approved by the commission back in 1971. The site is located within the AA residential zone, <clears throat> excuse me, and the applicant is seeking to change the zone to neighborhood design business district. The applicant argues that since the site has been used as a non-residential use, the proposed change is not a tr uh, transition from a traditional residential use, and the change would also facilitate the expansion of an existing use already in the neighborhood. With regard to consistency with the plan of conservation and development, the applicant points to the following policy uh, from the Greenfield Hill section of our plan. The Greenfield Hill Business Center is a neighborhood design business district which promotes uses appropriate to the area, provides safeguards from overexpansion, and limits business and commercial uses to those of a neighborhood scale. Only uses of this nature should be encouraged in this business center so that business uses complement the residential area. The applicant argues that the proposal is consistent with this goal as the applicant is a community-based business already in the neighborhood and needs the proposed expansion to remain viable. Those in opposition to the proposed zone change argue uh, that other uses beside the proposed veterinary use could be permitted if the zone change is approved. Further, development, the development plan as proposed in the companion special permit application is not neighborhood in scale and not complementary to the neighboring residential uses and therefore does not satisfy the POCD criteria referenced. Um, the standard considers, uh, considerations for a zone change are as follows. Number one, is the proposal consistent with the plan of conservation and development? Number two, does time, experience, and responsible planning for contemporary or future conditions reasonably indicate the need for the proposed zone change? Three, have circumstances in the neighborhood changed substantially to warrant the requested zone change? Number four, has it been demonstrated that the proposal is warranted and would serve the general health, welfare, and safety of the town? Five, does the proposed zone change promote a level of development that would serve to protect property values in the neighborhood and enhance the community and accomplish a transition in character between areas of unlike character? And lastly, would the proposed zone change permit a level of development that would increase undue traffic congestion? Now, as uh, the chairman indicated, there is a companion special permit application uh, which proposes to uh, the construction of a single story 7,000 square foot veterinary hospital together with a 28 car parking lot. 
Uh, the proposed plan satisfies the setback size and parking criteria of the neighborhood design business district. While there was certainly a voluminous support uh, for the proposed expanded veterinary use, those in opposition point to the 7,000 square foot size, proposed setbacks and overall impact to adjacent residential uses as being incompatible for the site. The considerations for a special permit are found in section 25.7.7 of our regulations. Is the development shown on the plan, site and architectural plans of such character as to harmonize with the neighborhood, to accomplish a transition in character between areas of unlike character, to protect property values in the neighborhood, to preserve and enhance the appearance and beauty of the community, and to avoid undue traffic congestion. That is all I have at this point, Mr. Chairman, subject to any questions. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that summary very much. Um, and so, so with that, I mean, I, I think that it, it's appropriate um, that we talk about these we, one at a time. I mean, if the, if the zone change uh, were to um, pass, then I think we ought to talk about the the special uh, the special exception. Um, but it seems to me that you know if the zone change is um, not acceptable and and is refused, then it really isn't um, a reason to you know debate the the site plan that they've put in front of us. Um, so you know my my recommendation here is to first have a motion on the um, the application for zone change if anybody's interested in and making that. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to deny the zone change. Okay, Commissioner Braun, motion to deny the zone change. Do I have a second? That's a second from Commissioner Corcoran. Okay, um, Commissioner Braun, your motion, would you like to, to start us off? Sure. Sure, on all the points that are raised as um, reasons. And again, um, a zone change is in our legislative authority, our broadest authority. This is how we pass rules and regulations that people are governed by. Um, the plan of conservation and development is quite clear on this. Uh, Greenfield Hill is a very unique part of our town. And if you really read the whole section on Greenfield Hill, I'd like to just read it so people can understand what it's about. It says zoning regulation, uh, it says, um, Zoning regulations amendments, which would increase permitted density of development should be discouraged in order to preserve the character of the area. I'm sorry, that's an added part of it. That's towards the end, but um, uh, new residential construction should be designed to preserve existing mature trees, minimize changes in grade, and maintain reasonable proportions with the other dwellings in the area. The existing historic district is an appropriate safeguard to protect the historic integrity of the original New England village, which existed in this area. The construction of an entrance or exit from the merit could be discouraged. Undeveloped areas should be examined for potential acquisition by the town or designated as open space, especially if they're adjacent to other open space. And I missed part of the beginning where it says the characteristics. Uh, Greenfield Hill is essentially a residential area composed primarily of two acre wooded lots with large single family colonial style homes and substantial areas of public and private open space. Uh, residents are tend to be served by private well, uh, private wells and septic systems rather than public services. Winding scenic roads and rambling stone walls are reminiscent of the original rural landscape of this area. The lack of the entrance of the merit adds to this ambiance. And then it goes on to say, the Greenfield Hill Business Center is a neighborhood design business district, which promotes uses appropriate to the area, provides safeguards from overexpansion and limits business and commercial uses to those in the neighborhood scale of a neighborhood scale. Only uses of this nature should be encouraged in this business center so that the business uses complement the residential area. So um, if you go through the criteria, um, it is not consistent with the plan of conservation and development. Um, there's, there's, there's no basis to change the zone of a residential area to a commercial area in any portion of Greenfield Hill, unless we've decided to expand by changing the plan of conservation and development. I don't think we've ever come to that conclusion and in any of our planning discussions. Does the um, responsible planning for contemporary or future conditions indicate the need for the zone change? I don't think so. I don't think we've ever discussed the need to expand the commercial district into the residential area of Greenfield Hill. Number three, have circumstances changed in the neighborhood? 
Well, there are, the only change I could really see is there are several vacant areas in the commercial district which actually could accommodate this business moving there as opposed to um, invading into a residential area. I drove by there and this is a very small parcel. It's elevated above the neighboring properties and um, it, it, it would have to be almost completely paved over and losing all the mature trees and also move it way closer to the road than the neighboring properties are um, in order to accommodate the size and scale of the building. However, there are some very large buildings with a pretty large first floor footprint in the commercial area, which I believe would satisfy it. And we, I don't think we really got a detailed explanation of why those weren't considered. Um, there's also a lot of parking on the areas within the commercial area. So that's the only change I saw, which to me says there's areas that this business could have moved to without going into a zone change of a residential area. Um, and would it serve the general, number four, would it serve the general health, welfare, and safety of the town? Um, I, it's not, of course, we all want to retain a local business, but that's not the basis on which to change a zone. I, I would love to have them stay and move into one of those other vacant spots. Um, does it promote a level of development that would protect the property values? Well, that would not be the case. Anywhere nearby would then be in a commercial area. And I don't know what those property value, what would happen to those property values. You would be moving the commercial area into the residential area. Um, would it permit a level of development that would increase undue traffic congestion? I'm not sure about that, um, but I think it fails on the first five. So in that regard, I don't think we can approve a change of the zone. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Commissioner Braun. Um, Commissioner Corcoran, you were seconded here. Would you like to uh, add yeah. that? Um, I agree with what Commissioner Braun said, and I was planning to go through the elements the way she did. I guess I will a little bit. Um, is the proposed uh, proposal consistent with the POCD? I think there's a provision in the POCD that generally says that business areas should not expand into residential areas, and this clearly um, violates that. I know that uh, Mr. Fallon quoted other uh, pieces of the POCD, but I think that this is the important one for this consideration. Also, um, I think that there's a concern that despite the so many neighbors being um, very happy with the veterinarian and what he does, and I think I would like to have that veterinarian, um, they, uh, we don't know what the next use of this building might be. And uh, once it becomes part of a new zone, um, it would be much easier to change it. Um, also, I was uh, impressed because uh, I listened to the uh, the tape this afternoon. I was impressed with the neighbors, the Petersons, who um, who laid out the reason why uh, they felt that this was not a good move. I think that they're entitled to count on the zoning rules as they exist to maintain the value of their property and to have. Um, the the zone changed next to them because people want to maintain the veterinary's business, I don't think is a good reason. Um, uh, I think there should be consistency in uh, what people can count on when they live in a particular zone. I think also um, one of the arguments that uh, Mr. Fallon made was that um, that he could use the um, existing commercial district's rules to um, to dictate what the setback would be on that part of the property on the street frontage. And um, the, as the Petersons pointed out, and I don't know the legal aspect of this, but it doesn't say the adjoining property, it says any adjacent property. And um, most of the adjacent properties are AA residential, they're not uh, designed commercial districts. so. Um, I think that uh, those standards are the ones that uh, could just as well be used to determine the setback. Because I think one of the objections that the um, P Petersons had was that this building would be much closer to the road than the houses next to it. And it'll change the, the way the, the street appears. Um, so um, that's why I don't think it should be passed. Thank you. I, I can give you some feedback on that um, on the setbacks. So, 
because uh, uh, all of the properties on that side of the street are zone AA residential, the, um, the properties across the street are in the neighborhood design business district in the Greenfield Hill Triangle, you know, commercial district there. And so um, rezoning this parcel from AA residential to neighborhood design commercial, they would have to comply with the immediately adjoining setbacks. So because on either side of the property is another AA residential zone, they have to comply with that setback um, on the sides and in the back of the parcel. But because their front line on the road is adjacent across the street from the neighborhood design business district, then they only need to comply with the front setback of the neighborhood design business district, which is the 14 feet. And so that's where you get this discrepancy between the front uh, street setback for those neighbors, right? On that same side of the street. Yeah. So when you, but when you look at our regulation, it just says adjacent properties. It doesn't say um, which adjacent properties. And I think the Petersons, and, and maybe there's legal precedents on this that I don't know, but uh, I think the Petersons were saying that um, even though the property across the street was adjacent, but so were all the others. I mean, there's nothing in the regulation that says it has to be that adjacent property on that side of the of the property. Okay. I mean, I think I, I was more persuaded by the, the alteration in the streetscape, right? If you have just this right. one parcel that has, has a 14 foot setback and the others, which have 50 foot setbacks, um, you know, you create a, a pretty big discrepancy in the, in the street streetscape uh, going forward. Um, but uh, no, all, all, all excellent comments and good points. Um, other members of the commission, Commissioner Newton. Thank you. Uh, I think the, um, I would also support a denial of the application. The, um, the veterinary uh, hospital and its staff is certainly, it appears, have well earned their reputation and their support among the community. Um, the volume and the passion for their support was uh, very persuasive, uh, enough to at least catch my, catch my attention to think maybe um, the zone change was appropriate, but I mean, ultimately, I think it, it struck me as unfair to the neighbors that they were the ones who were going to bear the burden of having this uh, zone change be right next door. And as I believe Commissioner Corcoran said, they're entitled to rely upon the regulations that we have. And in going through the regular zone change uh, factors, um, it may have made sense, I guess, in terms of the veterinarian use. But I don't think it made it, it meets as to the terms of uh, Fairfield in general. I, I don't believe again it was. I don't believe, as has been said, that it's consistent with the plan of conservation development, as stated by uh, both previous commissioners. They can see pretty clear. We've run into this uh, in the past. Uh, this general concept that commercial zones should not be invading residential zones, and I think there's I think that's pretty clear overall in the plan of conservation development and in this area um, directly. Time and experience responsible planning. Again, I don't see anything to it. The veterinarian may need time to, may have time and the experience to expand, um, but that doesn't mean that Fairfield has that uh, for the zone change itself. I found it telling that um, the applicant did not seek other areas outside of Fairfield. So I, it was unclear to me if, you know, if. Uh, there are other areas in Fairfield that would suffice. And Commissioner Braun rightfully points out that here we have vacant space in the neighborhood design district itself, which again points to does time and experience re, uh, suggest that we should be expanding a zone that is not fully used? Uh, the answer to that is no. And I mean, obviously, Fairfield in general is open for business as well. Um, and has the circumstances changed in the area? No, I don't believe so. Certainly would serve the general health and welfare of the town. Um, but again, I don't think that meets any of the other, it doesn't rise to the level meet any other needs. Um, I'll call a push on traffic congestion. Um, and as to property values, I, I doubt it for the neighborhood, the neighbor, excuse me, the neighbors. 
And again, I don't understand why they are the ones that need to bear the burden of that to accommodate um, this use for all for all the reasons we've said. Um, it again, it struck me as somewhat unfair to the neighbors. Um, it goes against what we generally avoid, and I found nothing very persuasive to change my mind. But again, I do I like to just credit the uh, veterinarian for the support it had because it did tempt me in a main main way to see that this. A uh, very important member of our community uh, gathers so much support, but for all the reasons we said, and I believe the more the responsible decision is to deny the zone change. Very good. Thank you very much. Other members, Commissioner Brayman. Thank you. I think I reached the same result as my fellow commissioners for slightly different reasons. I um, found much to recommend. Uh, the zone change application in it, and I believe that the POCD question is uh, slightly more complicated. Um, my concerns uh, lie mainly with the special permit application, and because um, the the only discretion I see the commission having with respect to the special permit application is pre predominantly in the area of screaming, screening, uh, adding additional screening. Um, I don't see a, a, a way uh, for this commission to approve the zone change uh, and also approve a special permit that I could um, support. Let me uh, talk a little bit about the zone change. Of course, um, our regulations themselves uh, specifically contemplate a zone change to a design district as is proposed here. and. Um, the, the very idea of a zone change uh, in our regulations presumes that zones uh, and districts aren't immutable. They, they do change over time and they, and they do change uh, within our legislative discretion. And, and when uh, we determine that there is, is a good basis to do so. Uh, of course, we like to see community support or even a groundswell of community support, even uh, consensus between the applicant and the neighbors uh, that a zone should change. Uh, the POCD is obviously the touchstone for whether we uh, allow a, a zone to, ch to change, whether we approve that change. Here, the POCD, uh, particularly for, for Greenfield Hill, uh, does speak of a neighborhood design district uh, that has uses that are compatible with the neighborhood, um, that provide services to the neighborhood. Um, and I can't see anything more compatible with uh, this neighborhood than a veterinary business providing services to that neighborhood that has been there uh, for decades that seeks to stay in that neighborhood to continue to provide those services to the neighborhood. Uh, the, uh, the use that is proposed for this particular site is, is also consistent with the way that this particular site has been used for the last 50 years. This is a site that has been in institutional use since 1972. It was a, uh, a church. And that is a use that is inherently more intensive than a residential use. And that, that, that use is compatible, uh, was compatible with the neighborhood. An institutional or, uh, or commercial use uh, uh, of a veterinary hospital seems to me similar in, ten in intensity to that use. Um, and I believe that there's a limiting principle where, whereby we would not be expanding uh, the commercial development willy-nilly into Greenfield Hill if we approve this zone change with an appropriate special permit. Um, now, that being said, I, I have grave concerns uh, that the, the neighbors raised about uh, the footprint uh, of this particular uh, veterinary hospital that's pr proposed. Um, the scale of it, I, I understand that there was a dilemma between, you know, keeping it one story and um, not uh, encroach, encroaching with the footprint onto neighboring properties. And the, the applicant chose to have a, a one story structure that consumes much of the, the area of, of the lot. Um, there's issues with the screening. I don't think that there's nearly uh, enough screening proposed in the, um, in the application. And unfortunately, the, the special permit regulations don't give us any discretion to determine the size or, or scale or footprint of the development or, or micromanage the orientation of the gravel walk or the, the transformers. 
the, the only discretion we really have is with respect to screening. I, I am tempted to uh, vote in favor of the zone change with the, the idea that we, we could solve some of the issues that the neighbors raise with respect to screening, but ultimately I don't think that is feasible. Um, and so because I cannot become comfortable, I cannot become comfortable with the special permit, I must vote to deny, deny the zone change. Very good, very good, thank you. I have I have some comments on that those issues, um, Commissioner Levy. <coughs> yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was really torn by this application. I mean, I think the neighborhood character of the business and the application is reflected in the name. It's the Greenfield Veterinary Hospital. It's been there for many many years, and it uh, yeah it serves Greenfield Hill and the surrounding communities. But uh, it's existed basically four doors up, uh, you know, for decades. And it is, uh, while it's, you know, not provided for within a residential district as uh, a church use might be, uh, it is certainly consistent with what has been there for many years, the institutional use that's been there for many years uh, in terms of the church, and the fact that it is adjacent to the uh, you know, Greenfield Hill, uh, you know, designed neighborhood uh, designed uh, business district there. Uh, it's right across the street. It's basically at the, the foot of Greenfield Hill. Um, I mean, our plan of conservation and development is not binding in the sense of it being like our zoning regulations, uh, which we're bound by or our zoning statutes. It is a plan. And, uh, you know, while the plan is to maintain the character, the residential character of Greenfield Hill, of course, uh, which is done largely with the double A zoning, uh, we're talking about an area that's adjacent um, to the, uh, <clears throat> you know, neighborhood designed uh, business district there, and that has been used for institutional purposes. I mean, to my mind, um, and I also note that our regulations, uh, section 28, uh, I think it's two, do provide that when there is a zone change and special permit application, uh, that they need to be filed and heard simultaneously. So while they remain separate and distinct, um, I think our zoning regulations uh, contemplate uh, that there is an overlay there, um, which should be taken into account on a, while we can't amend our regulations or deviate from them, but we do, uh, consider them jointly in connection with the combined application. Um, to my mind, the biggest problem is that because of timing, it was necessary to expedite this meeting. And, uh, you know, you'll recall at the last meeting, I invited the applicant to submit um, a landscape plan, which while it would not be part of, an, part of the application, might well be one that they would agree to as a condition should we consider the, you know, at such time as we consider the special permit, uh, to my mind, that has not been submitted, but there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, given the opportunity, the applicant would do just about anything, including putting, I had, God knows how many arborvitae or whatever would be needed uh, to have a wall of green surrounding this. I'm sure uh, if that is what had been requested by neighbors, that would have ultimately been accommodated. Um, so that being said, you know, I think I would have been inclined towards, uh, um, you know, basically allowing for the zone change in recognition of the impact that it has on the abutting neighbors, but at the same time would have made sure that in connection with the special permit application, that adequate screening and the placement of dumpsters and dog walk areas would be such uh, that this place might uh, basically disappear to the neighbors, so, but uh, it does not look like we'll have that opportunity. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Um, I, I find myself, thank you so much for, for all of those thoughtful comments. Obviously, we have all um, spent considerable time uh, thinking about this, visiting the site, um, and uh, considering the evidence and and the various uh, um, you know standards that we have to um, apply here, um, I find myself frankly somewhere between Commissioner Brayman and Commissioner Noonan. Um, 
you know, we, we sit in our broadest legislative capacity in uh, zone change, as uh, Attorney Fallon pointed out. Um, and so long as we have, uh, you know, rational underpinning and justification, um, we can decide to grant any zone change we want. Um, you know, Attorney Fallon um, took is some issue with the various criteria that um, Mr. Went recited that we typically talk about that we're talking about tonight, you know, consistent with the POCD, time and experience, circumstances change, et cetera. And he said um, that, you know, he, he couldn't find any authority for that. Um, I'd like to just say that for, for the record, um, while I don't have a case to cite in support of those criteria, uh, they are extremely relevant and productive criteria for us to uh, consider in determining whether to exercise this broadest discretion that we have, right? And if not, to look at the POCD and what time and experience tells us about how to consider a zone change, whether circumstances have changed, um, whether it serves the general health and welfare of, of the population, um, whether it's gonna create undue chat traffic congestion, et cetera. I mean, those are the considerations that we should take into you know take into account uh so so i would just like to 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 say straight away that i think we're all notwithstanding attorney fallon's arguments i think we're all talking about the right things um you know some of the comments about you know this has been an existing institutional use um the the, the veterinarian was there commissioner levy you make a great point about there being an interplay between the zone change and a special permit uh, being filed at the same time and they should be considered at the same time. Well, that's, I think, because you have to have some idea of what is proposed for this new new zone change, right, at the time that you're considering whether you ought to, to change the zone. And, and that's why I ultimately uh, agree with Commissioner Brayman in that um, while I think there might have been some uh, common ground here um, and I, I can't support the zone change unless the neighbors, the adjoining landowners support the zone change. Um, and, and, you know, our discretion uh, to um, change something as significant as the underlying zone, particularly where we would rezone a residential uh, area to a commercial area immediately adjoining other residential properties, um, you know, everybody should be singing kumbaya, right? Um, the, the, I, I'm meaning, the, you know, the immediately adjoining land uh, neighbors and, and the general neighborhood. Um, you know, I think it, it is a, a bit different when you're talking about, you know, rezoning an area that's in the downtown commercial district um, where we're trying to re wrestle with issues of parcels that have been split, where there's, you know, half of is, is commercial, half is residential, because, you know, in the 50s, they just drew a line down, uh, you know, parallel to the post road. And, you know, we've had to grapple with those from time to time over the years. But this one seems to me to be a, a really, you know, uh, uh, special case, right? The church that was there was a permitted use in the residential zone. We have churches in residential zones. Um, it was 2,200 square feet. The proposed uh, veterinary hospital is 7,000 square feet. Um, you know, the church was um, nothing new, near 150 feet long. And this is gonna be, an, would be a relatively imposing building, notwithstanding all the arborvitaes that they might plant. Um, you know, along the um, along the property line to to shield it from view, um, and so you know, um, I think that there might be some common ground that could result over the course of time, but where we are today is an applicant who hasn't given any indication that they want anything other than a 7,000 square foot single story, 150 foot long uh, building and neighbors who have objected to that. Um, and so, you know, uh, on top of all the other 
considerations that my fellow commissioners have, have voiced, I would like to add that to the mix. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I fall uh, also on the side of, um, you know, denying the, the zone change. And with that, I'd also like to say that, um, which I probably should have led with, you know, uh, highly respect um, the practice and the applicant. And, you know, I do appreciate the fact that they have served the community for decades and they have a loyal following. And, you know, we want to support commercial development. We want to support local businesses and we do. Um, and it's just that th th this just presented, um, you know, a, 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 a very conflicted uh, scenario for me. Um, and, and in particular, uh, because there is vacancy in the neighborhood design dis business district that is right across the street. And it may not have been perfect, but I can't see um, encroaching the uh, commercial zone into the residential zone when we have vacancies, uh, you know, they're uh, ready to go um, across the street. Um, so, you know, those, those are my my comments. Do we have any other questions or comments? I mean, it seems like we have um, all uh, independently arrived at generally the same the same place. Um, Commissioner Francis. Yes, um, I I would agree with the comments that have been made about. I, my basic concern is the sanctity of zoning and that the neighbors have a right to depend that their zoning is going to be consistent. And, you know, as, as most have said, this is just a large structure and it, it will be out of character without immediate area. And there's so many, as you say, across the street also. Um, they probably have to make a two story building, but of 4,000 feet each or something. I mean, there's a 4,000 foot limit anyway in that dis business district, isn't there? The, so the 4,000 4, limit uh, um, does not apply to uh, veterinary hospitals. Oh, okay. And so that, and, and so that, that is a, a quirk in this, um, okay. in this circumstance. So, um, you know, the building, but, I think. Yeah, it's just something that bothers me that people have a right to depend that their zone is going to last when they buy a home. And and and, and if it's to be changed, they should be in agreement with that. So to, mm -hmm. to Commissioner yes. Brayman's point, you know, zoning is not immutable. It does change right. over time. And yep. usage, you know, we, we've right? made a lot of changes. Yeah. No, without a yeah. doubt. Um and and uh, but but you know, particularly in, in this area, which is, is residential, you know, we're not, we're, we're, that we have the neighborhood design business district that is, is it's quite unique. It's, it's on its own parcel surrounded by the roads, right? It, you know, um, and uh, those, um, uh, the, 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 the parcel in question here, 40 Hillside is on the other side of the street and it is, zone double a residential and all of the you know the neighbors are double a residential so it would be it would be an outlier um and uh, notwithstanding the fact that it has existed as a a church um being a permitted use in the double a residential zone um and i think part of the reason why it did harmonize is because it was 2200 square feet you know those homes there you know, it's it's a pro that is a, approximately the size of a, of, a, of a moderately sized, you know, single family residence. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Anyone else? I mean, it sounds like um, we're ready to vote. I mean, I think we have each um, amply uh, provided our reasons, uh, you know, and, 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 and uh, analysis for the record. Okay. So the motion on the table is to uh, deny 
the uh, zone change. All in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that motion to deny carries unanimously, um, which does leave us to uh, B1B, which is the special permit application, 40 Hillside Road, LLC, pertaining to this construction of a veterinary hospital, which um, I think fails, um, you know, as of, uh, because of the zone change, but we should vote. So, Commissioner Noonan? Move to deny. Motion to deny by Commissioner Noonan. Second. Second by Commissioner Braun. Thank you. So, as I just indicated, uh, you know, the, the special permit really fails as a matter of law, considering our vote on the zone change. So, unless anyone else has any questions, we should go. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that uh, item B uh, two uh, B one B uh, also uh, is denied unanimously. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned, um, the closed executive session is not going to go forward, um, and um, now it really is my last meeting. <laughs> Well, um, I, I would like to thank the commission for being uh, for the availability on short notice to resolve this matter before terms end on Monday. And once again, my congratulations and thanks to those of you for whom this might be their last meeting, particularly you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, everyone, and thank you all for your service. And best of luck to all of you, new new commissioners. Thank you, Mark. Thank you Matt. Likewise, yeah. take care. Yeah, happy happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, yeah, we can